Today I want to talk about the tube routing application in NX. I've been doing a little bit of routing and I found it to be a very good tool. There's quite a bit that you could do with it. Now the tools come with a Mach 3 license. And you'll note there are quite a few things here. You don't get all of the tools in the application. So this is sort of the entry point into the routing tools so you can actually build routes and do quite a bit with them but uh, there are additional licenses that give you the full capability of these applications and I haven't had a chance to play around with them but I have to admit what they give you out of the box in Mach 3 is quite good so here's a little example I'm gonna run a tube from one fitting through these two down to that fitting. Okay. Now, I have these supports here. I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off for now. So, I'm going to start out with a linear path. And for the linear path, I'm going to start out with specifying a point. Okay. That point is going to be here at the center. And where does this next endpoint go to? Well, there are a lot of ways to determine that. Now, what I'm going to go to is what's called axis parallel. And because I picked the center point, there's an inference that it's normal to the circle. Okay, so it's concentric and we have the inference, the normal. And I'm just going to come out and pick, but before I pick a point, I'm going to determine the size of my diameter. So you want to put your diameter in first. Uh, this is one of those things where you can't really change it easily without a license, additional licensing. So just put in the diameter that you want or the type of stock that you want. I'm going to come out to whatever distance I feel is necessary and just pick a point. Notice as soon as I select my endpoint, I get my first segment for my stock. Now, right now, it still says axis parallel. I no longer want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to specify point to this point. Now, I have this point set up inside of the file for the header. And basically, I just have a reference set displaying that point. Now, as soon as I select that next point, you'll note that it puts in the default corner. There's a corner setting that you have in here. It's called assigned corner which I've uh, set and um, you can go back and make modifications to that. It's one of the things you can't change. So it automatically puts that corner in for me. Next, I'm gonna come over to this point and once I pick that point, I get the next bend and that next segment. So by setting up just a couple of points really helps out because uh, you know, there are ways that you can just pick stuff and move the center line to wherever it needs to be. And I'm going to show some of that here, but there's also a point where it's just easier to create some assisting geometry. And that's what I did with those points. Now I need to take this, come out, down, and over. Now to come out, what I'm going to do is I'll just align it to the top view here. I'm going to change this and say axis parallel. What is my axis? Well, I'm going to come in here and say, all right, I'm going to say inferred axis. What's my inferred axis? This is my inferred axis. And I'm going to come out somewhere over to here. Whoops, I added one too many segments. I'm just going to control Z and undo that. I added something in there by accident. Now I'm going to come down and I'm going to bend down and over. So what's my vector? That's my vector. I'm going to come down. There's my bend. And then to finish this off, I'm going to come in here, specify point and go to that end point and select OK. There's my routing. Now, as you can see, it's not quite right. I have a few little modifications to make and that's very easy. So I'm going to go into assemblies and what I'm going to do 
for the modification. I have these held in position. These can these are constrained into position. And um, for that, you know, you can see one of them is coming up kind of odd. So I'll just go ahead and delete it. That's fine. I'll show you what happens. For that, now I'm going to come in and use my touch constraint. I want a routing object. What's my routing object? It's going to be actually, no, I don't want a routing object. I'm just reset that. I want the center line. I'll show you routing object in a bit. And then what's my stationary object? Stationary object is center line to this. Now, once I add that assembly constraint, note, it updates. Now, look up here what's happened. It's adjusted this whole routing. Okay. And that's fine. I'm going to select OK. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and add another constraint. This is where I'm going to say routing object. Okay. I'm going to go in here and say a routing object. I'm going to be very specific. So I'm going to pick the, in essence, the corner, the bend point, or the corner before the bend, to reset that to this point. Okay, and I'm going to apply that. Actually, I'm going to say OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to change the angle that this is sitting at. And the angle that I want is going to be perpendicular. So, motion object, I'm going to take that and make it perpendicular to that face. And select OK. And now we have an angle on this. So I do want an actual angle on that. I want to go from this object to this face. What's my angle? Shrink it a little bit. Say 25. That's fair. Select OK. And just like that, I have my routing. It's in place. Now, the nice thing about this is because everything is held in by constraints, is that if, but if I move something, so let me display my constraints. So if I take this value here, okay, I have my value. I want to take it, and if I pull this up, Notice what happens. Those routing elements update. Everything updates. Now when I hit OK, you'll see everything move to where it needs to go to. So if I wanted to shift this again, maybe this needs to be a little bit further out. OK. Or somebody says, well, you know what? I want this bend over here to be a little bit bigger. I can go in here and say, there's my assign a corner. I'm going to pick my corner routing object. Right now, the ratio is 2 to the diameter. Maybe I want that at 3. Type 3 in, hit my OK or apply, and now I have a much larger bend in that corner. And if I go to a, make a new routing, it'll remember what this corner value is. Okay, so if I want to set this beforehand, all right, if I said, all right, this is going to be two, hit OK. Well, let me go back in there. Didn't remember it. But if I were to apply it to something, it would remember it, okay? So this tool is really great, really, really great. There's a few little nuances. But um, once you pick up on them, like I said, I, I know NX well enough because I've been on it for so long that I picked up on a lot of the little nuances pretty quickly. There, are, I'm sure there's a lot more that I haven't picked up on. But uh, this is great. This is the routing for, uh, for tubes, right, hard tubes. There's also an application that you can use for electrical as well. Very, very similar, nearly identical. So there are some differences because one's electrical, one's for metal tubes. Uh, let me go back to home. 
And um, uh, something else that I've done, because these points are in certain position, let me double click on my cover here with the header. And you note I have these datum planes that are offset. In order to modify this datum plane, like, because I'm inside of the routing application, if I double click on that datum plane, you'll see it just goes into properties, which is fine, because I still have the ability to modify that datum here. And this is why it's important uh, you know, to use, maybe you want to use the, uh, some of the expression tools as well. But in this case, I have it here. So say I want to move this uh, back out to 60. Note the datum plane moves, which changes the point location, which changes the routing application as well. So there's a lot of linking going on here. And again, there are a lot of other tools in here. I'm not going to cover them all. You can divide segments and add additional runs and do all sorts of neat stuff that are extremely powerful. But uh, again, some of the functionality is not available, like Run Navigator, stuff like that. There's no, actually, let me go to Application here, go to my Run Navigator. You'll see, right, there's my Run. What do I have? Nothing, nothing, Navigator. Because I don't have anything really set up, uh, other applications, right? I got Merge Stock edit stock character, can align stock, upgrade stock. So let's say I wanted to replace the stock. All right, I have part numbers, so on and so forth. There's my value, all right, select all, check on set, can I find characteristics? Well, I don't have that library set up. I haven't gone through and done all the extra work. So this is not gonna do anything for me. Okay, so if I go in here and say edit stock, you see I can't. That's an advanced application is turned on. So again, some of the functionality is not there because you need additional licenses, which is fair because the tool comes, this stuff that I'm showing right now comes out of the box with Mach 3, okay? And it's really nice.